uh, I will call the select board meeting to order at three at four thirty four p.m. Thank you. Uh, start with minutes. Um, Brenda, uh, thank thank you, Brenda, for pointing out there were a couple of numbers that I flipped. Um, so for everyone's information, uh, Frontier Regional Debt Service should read. 19,360, not 560. And Dickinson Library Trust, um, the funding should be 3832, not 3823. Thanks, Brenda. Sure. Okay. So we have a motion. We'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the and March. March 25th. March 25th, thanks. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Any other discussion or amendments? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstaining? All right, that passes 301. Um, so we have a couple of budgets still to do. Um, right. Do what you want to do? Start with? do contracted, contracted, contracted service? Contracted service. services. Okay. Yeah. So I just. 159-5410. Um, so Casey came to us last week with an additional amount in there. Um, oh, you probably want to move it. Don't you? Oh, yeah. Everybody found it. The new copy today. <laughs> I move that we recommend the sum of 268,334 again for contracted services. Account number 15954. I'll second that. Okay. So uh, there was an additional 10,000 in here last week for um, appraisals, surveys, uh, and legal work in regards to the Stillwater Bridge. Um, but Casey can uh, speak to this better than I can. You got word today that you can uh, start to contract for those in this fiscal year, and we have the room in the budget. So she's going to work to do that and get those contracts set for this fiscal year so that we can either spend it in this fiscal year or encumber it. Yeah. Right, Casey? Yes. Can everybody pull their mics a little bit closer? I can barely hear everyone. We can uh -oh. barely hear you either. <laughs> oh, darn. And I'm usually so loud. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to up the uh, speaker. Maybe. Um, so for purposes of what Brenda just said, we did get confirmation that the plans for Stillwater Bridge were approved so we can start the right of way notification process. I've reached out to Council and we're going to set up a meeting with mass DOT so that we can begin that. But I figured it would provide a little bit of relief if we could do it in this fiscal year and encumber whatever funds we need um, to the best of our ability into to take, give a little relief for next fiscal year. Um, the I'm concerned because DCR owns um, on the uh, east east side, east south side of Stillwater Bridge, and uh, and taking it out of conservation restriction, which it has on it, uh, is a legislative process. So we need to get going on it as soon as possible. We don't want to hold up the bridge project. Go ahead. Makes sense. Yep. Makes sense. I think that's what Casey's saying too, and Brenda, and everybody's in agreement. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. I, I I'm I am nervous about the timeline on that. Yeah. Uh, I know Joe and uh, Natalie are both willing to work with us and and make sure it happens as fast as possible. But you know anything that goes to the legislature is sort of slow. So if I may ask, this basically just means we're using this year's coming out of this year's funds. For, so we're basically, it just means we will have fewer, less uh, free cash for next year. Yeah, well, it's, uh, I'm not sure, yes, we'll have less free cash because it will come out of this year's budget and not roll over. But I'm not really sure how much money it will actually take. I mean, we estimated 50,000 total, but I'm, I'm that was a guesstimate on my part for surveying 
uh, deed lawyers, all, the whole thing. It is complicated because um, the hydro companies, whether it's TransCanada, Great Hydro, or Hydro-Quebec, own the property on the west side, both north and south of the bridge. And um, so we'll have, it's an international exchange of some sort. So we just need to get started on it. I don't think it's so much an expense, it's just the process. And that's why we want to get moving on it. Julie? I think part of the concern last week when we were talking about it was that it was a large addition to the budget, which would then propagate forward. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, we remove that concern entirely. Were there other concerns or? <clears throat> this question is that's accurate. Okay. Casey, any further? Still have a comment? No, I just wanted to say that um, there is a timeline for the project. It's due to start in 2026, February of 2026. Um, they'll be putting out the bids and everything and be ready to get going. But there is, it is a lengthy process. So if we can start sooner rather than later, we'll be in better shape. That's why when it came across my email that we had the plans approved, that's why I wanted to remove that 10,000 from FY25 and get it started now. Yeah, sounds great. Any okay. further discussion or questions? Nope. All those in favor? Uh, it passes four zero zero. I make a motion to approve the new contracted services number one fifty nine fifty four ten at two eighty uh, two sixty eight three thirty four. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. Thank All right. you. So we have the uh, Deerfield Elementary School. The uh, school committee did vote the budget that they had last presented to us of uh, 5,341,279. And that number is, uh, the number for Deerfield Elementary School is 300-5400. 300-5400, right. right here. I assume this version is actually updated April 1st? Um, no, we have one that was dated March 25th. Okay, but you have Okay, because the previous one is also dated March 8th, and it's a different amount. Yeah, I don't have it. Uh, the one, yes, the, well, the one prior to that I had is March 11th. Okay. Um, but anyway, so the total is 5,341,279. Okay. So I that's unchanged know. from March 8th. But okay. it's different from the other March 8th. I guess we will. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys need copies? You're right. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys need it? Does anybody need a copy or? No, we've got it. We've just said, okay. The, the, okay. The last one, the current one is dated March 8th, and the last one was dated March 8th. And they oh, before. it was updated March 8th, but I printed it on March 25th, the very, very bottom, the very bottom so corner. The one you just had, we just got is 25th. Right. Okay. The one that everybody else got last week and you just got. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, Mark. Very Great. Yeah. So we need a motion. Um, I will move to recommend the sum of five million three hundred forty one thousand two hundred seventy nine dollars for Deerfield Elementary School account number three hundred dash fifty four hundred for FY twenty five. Second. So this is only 1.44% increase, and this includes that big transportation problem they had, right? Right, because they found another means to, um, to pay for that. that difference, I think. Okay. Right? I, if, if I remember right, rural aid, yeah. so that's something that we really need to keep, keep, it, uh, keep in the back of our minds next year in case the rural aid program uh, is gutted. Right. Um, I, I will have an updated letter, hopefully, by next week. We have another meeting on Thursday, so I, I will find out what people are doing across the state. Do we know if the school committee has discussed and voted 
uh, well, I guess if they voted the budget, they voted the transportation portion. I'm wondering what the outcome was on the transportation bid. I, Shelly didn't mention that. Uh, Casey, did you get any communication from them in that regard? On who was awarded the bid? On on how those negotiations came out, because I thought they were they were going to re readdress it, right? That's what they were going. That's what they said they were going. To I do. do not have any updated information. Oh, and look at that flex van and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> any discussion? Questions? Should we should we hold to find that information out or or? We recommend that we take a vote tonight on this number. I just don't want, I, I, I want to be sure that that's discussed. I think that's a, that's a big, that's a big sum of money. Um, I don't think it's going to change. It's not going to change the budget any. People um, took $75,000 out. They might though, they might um, uh, hold back on using some of their pool rate. I, I, I guess I, I don't have a, a preference one way or another. I you know I wouldn't be object to voting would, tonight. Um, I would feel comfortable voting it because the school committee has voted. Okay. Yeah, I was um, right. If you want, I'd, I'd be happy to take an action item to get a hold of Shelley and just find out um, what's up and report back next week without it really. And then we will have voted it. And, um, so what are down. we saying? Vote. So we're going to vote it now, and then assuming it passes, um, we'll we'll just check so with so Shelley and find out. Two, right? Huh? We're going to vote it subject to. No, just... we're just going to vote it with with just a um, information oh, gap. Somebody's after. uncomfortable with that. I thought you mentioned the school committee hadn't approved it. No, they have. They voted. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, they voted it last Tuesday. Would you just clarify what you're going to ask? I'm going to ask Shelly, Shelly Pareda, what, um, if they have um, negotiated with the transportation bid at all, um, specifically, we had a question about the flex van um, and whether that could be removed from the, um, the bid, from the, the contract, I guess. any other discussion you guys uh -huh. feel very far away Beth does have a conflict so she's not coming to yeah. her before okay um he I think he had a conflict tonight too so this may be it um sit in the comfy chair I could yeah mm -hmm. so any discussion for you? not on the seating arrangements but on the uh, actual item no okay all those in favor that passes four zero zero. Have you guys voted already? I'll make a motion to approve the Deerfield Elementary School budget three hundred fifty four hundred at five million three hundred and forty one thousand two hundred and seventy nine dollars. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill GI. Carolyn Nessai. All right. Okay. And then we wanted to look at the um, Board of Health payroll. And that's 512-5110. Yes. We'll move to recommend. Yes. I'll move to recommend the sum of $101,769 for Board of Health payroll account number 512-5110 for FY25. A second. Okay. Any discussion? So this, oh, yeah. yep. The only sheet I have is they printed February 12th and shows 91591. Uh, so you need to just verbally tell me what's different. Um, it's the hours, John. 
Uh, we went. No, uh, I, I just, I oh. just want to know what they want. What, I mean, so you know, the board of health, is, I have four, five, six, eight, five. So her her salary, the board of health agent is fifty one one ninety nine, and that's for twenty two and a half hours a week. And then the alternate agent is six hundred and fifty hours for twenty seven thousand eight twenty. And then there's an offset of four thousand dollars for um, the NATO grant, um, which is what we figured was about the amount that the nurse is spending towards that grant that will be um, charged against the grant instead of against this account. So that's the offset. Thank you. It's um, what's happening here. Uh, there's good things happening. Um, the public health nurse is has 12 hours um, that we pay and have been paying for uh, Cindy Mayeski. Mm -hmm. And she works with the seniors. She spends a few hours a week, and that's where the 4,000 offset is. We have a small grant that should go last four or five more years. Um, she is updating us monthly on our vulnerable population of elders uh, and that are um, homebound and other home visit she she does under the grant so that's why there's an offset for her hours um under the board of health agent she's well and then back to the nurse i mean I, we we have under the grant for the public health excellence we have 15 hours of a new nurse and must uh straight stri i'm going to say her name wrong so i'll just say nurse ann is will be spending uh time in the community She's gonna do our MAVEN disease follow-up and um, also outreach in the community and also help Cindy with um, some of the home visits. But what we also have from the grant, which is wonderful, is access to five public health part-time nurses that will provide us with vaccine management. This past year, when we did the senior flu clinic, I had to use a Cosaldo um, ambulance they said that they would come and do my senior flu clinic for um, $600 and they sent us a bill for $1,300 and there was nothing I could do because they that's the people that they sent. And I did not know until after the clinic was over that the, what the charge would be. So from now on, we are buying the vaccine through our grant. We will be able to run it ourselves. And um, so that's a huge savings. Uh, and we also, if we had another like pandemic, we would be able to manage our own um, flu clinics or, or dispense whatever it is. Um, and that's a good, uh, huge improvement over where we were. So um, that's exciting news. Um, we have about $1,500 uh, extra income with when we increased the uh, most of our um, food trucks are going to ha happen in April, end of April, May, and June um, is the next slug of food trucks. And that is estimated based on the, what we've done this past year, uh, extra $1,500 from going from $35 to $50 in food truck inspection. And that translates to about $4,200 in the coming year. It's very conservative. We, as you remember, um, we last year, no, be, the year before, we went up to 30 hours, assuming that we would be having to, we would be able to cover that with the increase at Treehouse. Well, it didn't materialize and we cut our hours to 20. And now we're going up to 22 and a half because we believe that that is the, uh, a 20% increase at Treehouse and a handful of increases once the Leary got lot gets done and we have people coming off the highway, Berkshire Brew might in, increase their food trucks. So that is the only increase um, to our food trucks, a very conservative number. And that's about $4,200.
last time we met, we were asking about um, the income from the inspections. Did we? Well, we that that's what Carolyn was just referring to is that the the difference for this year might be about $1,500, but the difference for next year, because that'll be a full year of the higher rate, she's saying that that'll be about $4,200 for the year. The difference being that the, that the income the, will be more than the expense or less than the expense by oh, No, she's yeah. saying the income will be that much more than what it what it is. Okay. That's that's their projection. It's conservative, but we we assumed that we would be able to cover a 30 hour or we would be having to use a 30 hours a week. And that never materialized. That's why we cut it down to 20. Right. Yeah. And now we're now we're increasing it to 22 and a half, assuming that there's going to be a slight increase. The the new health agent we have, Valerie, is extremely efficient. So that's why it's it's a slight increase. And is the 22 and a half, is that an estimate? And she just works when she gets calls or yes. She, yeah. Okay. Correct. She only works when she's when we are. If required to do it. This is not a it's so every week position. Remember, yeah. No, no, it's just a prediction. Okay. So, from what you said, if the anticipated revenues are going up four to two hundred, and the anticipated expenses are going up by about ten thousand, then we're losing money on food trucks. <laughs> well, I think I, you know over the last couple of years, your your um, Board of Health fees have been going up. So this 1500 and the 4200 is just in addition to what, what was a rich increase last year by changing their rates on a lot of things. So I don't know that I would, I, don't, I, I think that statement is not quite right. No, we, you're not gonna cover 100%, but we're trying to get as close to revenue neutral as possible. Um, you have a handful of, um, I mean, we collect fees for most, for what Dick does. He does septic, Title V, all that kind of stuff. And um, we collect fees for food trucks, restaurant inspections, and that kind of thing. But it's never going to be 100% because we have housing issues that we cover that we don't collect fees on. Um you, we have a handful of hoarding cases, two to four on the average in the year. And then once in a while, we have some housing issues that require going to housing court. And one we have is on Greenfield Road has been long, long running. <laughs> and then we have also a new one on Stillwater Road. And there's not, you know, there's not much we can do about it. We just have to have Valerie handle it. Um, and I have to say, she is keeping us 100% out of liability here. She's she's fabulous. We're gonna go in receivership on the one on Stillwater Road with very minimal cost um, compared to what we could have been facing. And we're hoping that the Greenfield Road one will end up being finished this year. Um, this is a question for Brenda. Are we able to avail ourselves of local options meals tax on food trucks? No. So, so your um, food trucks pay sales tax in the community that mm -hmm. where they're based. Ah. And that's why you know we, <laughs> that's so much for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We want to make sure they're safe. That's why we inspect them, but also because it is you. You don't get meals tax. You don't. They don't pay property tax. Yeah. They don't do anything so they're not a sit-down establishment so no that's yeah, unfortunate that's unfortunate it seems to be the business model that's happening the schools have been pretty i would say stable um because it's cheaper to have a food truck come than to keep their dining rooms open so uh when they have special events now they do food trucks yeah. but that's pretty stable for their events and their calendar um, the only increases we're really seeing is from Treehouse and potentially Berkshire Brewing. 
um, might have some increase when people start coming off the highway for the Leary lot charging and stuff like that. That's why it was very conservative 10% increase, which is just a handful for Berkshire Brew. Right. You know, the meals tax has grown substantially since deer, uh, tree houses come to town. And they're uh, only serving pizza. Can you imagine if they expanded their menu? Yeah, <laughs> it, it, exactly. Yeah. Um, how much we could make from I didn't see that their um, <laughs> pizza place was getting bigger, right? They're expanding the, the yes. capacity. Yeah. Well, people, right. yeah, yeah, they're going there. And right. A lot of people, pizza. a lot of people like their pizza. Um, um, I'm not a fan, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but the, the meals tax and brooms tax has both of them have exploded since since treehouse has come to town. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy right. regardless of whether we're getting the money for the treehouse. Um thanks to Christopher uh right here behind me. He um has negotiated just finished negotiating with Berkshire Brew in anticipation of slight increase and and we do have an agreement with um treehouse to to bill every month our um, food truck fee. So hopefully that will eliminate some of the complaints from the food trucks about having to be inspected each time and also make sure that we capture every inspection. I think Treehouse ends up paying those fees yeah. instead yep. of the food truck. Yeah. Yep. So we have eliminated the paperwork costs here in the, in the office, which is somewhat um, expensive for some the number of, uh, I mean, those are the highest number of food trucks that we have to deal with. My apologies if you've already addressed this. Um, I think you mentioned that Sue is 22 and a half hours a week, correct? Is that Valerie, you mean? Valerie, I'm yes. sorry. Valerie. Let's stick to the position names. So. Okay, Board of Health Agent is only 22 and a half. <laughs> yeah, we're going 22 for and a half hours a week. In coming years, do you expect the number of hours per week to grow? And do you expect that the revenues will offset any future growth? I do. I think we will have growth. Uh, we're going from 20 to 22 and a half. Um, and um, I believe that we will probably hit 25 next year. But we're not going to increase the hours until we see the, the need. The need. The need. She works part time, so if she is not collecting a fee, she's not working. She's not collecting a fee. Kind I, of thing. I think she's quite happy to be part time. Yeah, she's yeah. She doesn't. I mean, we're gonna. Ha you know, it's gonna be a situation at, where we're gonna go have to go up to thirty hours again and get a full. You know, more uh, full time position at some point, but hopefully that's a, a couple years away. So if she's 22 and a half though, that, does that make her benefited? She's she's already benefited at 20. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, she, she is she gets benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we compare just to the inspections department, for example, it's a vaguely similar process, I think. Um the inspectors in the various trades are $40 an hour and our assistant agent and our public health nurse are 40 to 80. And then the commissioner is 40 to 54 an hour mm -hmm. and the board of health agent is 43 76. So the board of health folks are getting paid more than the building inspector folks. I'm not going anywhere with this other than just noticing it. Is that does that seem like a reasonable thing? under under the PHE grant? Um, we are having to go and get special permission because we posted the job between fifty and fifty five um, dollars an hour for uh, a shared health agent that is supposed to be able to pick up uh, um, hours from us, and we have not been able to fill. That position, so we're going to have to increase the pay scale. Just to let you know, it's kind of this is where the pay scale is. It's much more. 
good observation though. I mean, she's at a lower grade, higher step, it looks like, right? Than the commissioner. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. So she's got longevity or experience or something. Any other discussion or questions or comments? Just um it's strictly uh, a strictly financial observation. Um the uh wage growth um across the budget um it, the rate of wage growth uh there's going to have to be a good look at that in future years because uh wage growth i think we're seeing between say four and a half percent to ten plus percent year on year yeah um for various positions is just frankly unsustainable i get that the town wants to hire the the brightest and the best um but we are constrained by prop two and a half so we need to we need to really think about that in the future uh i don't disagree but truthfully to find certified people is very difficult mm -hmm. and they can command whatever wage that they really you know what what we want to pay and what they can command are just sometimes two different things when you the have certified people would be trying to get by with fewer people what the alternative though would be getting by with fewer people <clears throat> and i can guarantee guarantee you that's impossible yeah. well you'd have uh, to ask with, less with what we're doing people who are yeah. here if you want to do that so you would have to have fewer fewer services for right. things going on it's just a general observation that's all and um mm -hmm. in light of revenue-based budgets Any other discussion on board of health payroll? Are you all, since we were asking last time we met about the the income, are you all happy with the discussion we've had on the the revenues associated with this one? Or do you have any further questions in that area? No. No. Push those meals. All right. Um, so it has, I'm going to restate it just to get the amount out there again. So it has been moved and seconded for Board of Health payroll at 101769 Any further discussion? All those in favor? I'm going to pass those four zero zero. I make a motion to approve 512-5110 5110 at 101769 Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Governor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. I do want to say that hopefully we'll, under the PAG grant, that, we're, that we are in actually starting, we're just finishing the first year, and it will go for eight years more. We are having a part-time health agent that will pick up some of the hours if, if we have growth once we get hired in person. But like I said, we have not been able to hire, or the range has been before, between 50 and $55 an hour. So as soon as we get permission from the state to post it at a higher rate, hopefully we'll get somebody and and that might cut down some of the hours in the end, because it'll be available for all of us. Yeah, it, it just as a reminder, the PHE grant is a grant that is um, shared between several towns, but Greenfield is the lead um, lead town on it. It's, it's Greenfield, Montague, uh, Deerfield, Sunderland, uh, Shutesbury, and Lever. And that's why we have five part-time health nurses, public health nurses, and we will have a part-time health or a full-time health agent that will be split between the towns. We're making your work. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that that's we've gone through all the budgets now, right? I believe so. Budget. Oh. Uh, Casey, can you let me share my screen, please? Give me one sec. Okay, should be able to do that, Julie. Yeah, yep. that way. Yeah. 
I got a couple of questions. Okay. Huh? On. on the budget, budget items. Okay, hold on to those for a second, and then we'll get to them. Um, so this is the same balance we were looking at last week. Um, this went down by 10,000 because of the contract and services that we just voted that came down by 10,000, right? Um, this, um, well, I guess it, it's less negative by 10,000, right? <laughs> um, and then the 20,000, you remember we, we took the, uh, reserve fund from 120,000 to 100,000. So that's incorporated in here. Um, and this is not withholding any free cash. So this is the, the total balance of free cash would be 297,000 if we look at that. Um, if we want to move the cruiser, the police cruiser out of the omnibus into the warrant articles, this is where we are for a balance. So we're at 110,000. Um, of free cash that we're using for our omnibus budget. Um, but it, we do have almost 300,000 left in free cash. So right? this doesn't include any capital items? Right. This, or does it include the capital uh, items in warrant articles? It includes, no. I don't, I don't know. It would not have been included in that. Um, oh, right. That we talked about last week. So, right. right. And there, how much was the, um, and, and just as a side note, you know, that's really the most free cash that we've used to support the omnibus budget in several years. So, I mean, I think it used to be common practice to use a lot more. And uh, we brought it down quite a bit uh, four or five years ago, and now it's just been creeping back up again. Yeah, is that what we were using? Yeah. I can't remember. We were in the it five was, and six hundred thousand dollar range generally. It was a lot. Yeah. Did that include um, EMS? Yes. Yeah. We've always yeah. paid the EMS out of free cash. So that was five hundred thousand, and now EMS alone is over five hundred thousand. Plus, we're using free cash to fund the omnibus budget. Well, EMS is less than five hundred thousand now. Oh, but, well, right, almost five hundred thousand. Yeah. Our share yeah. of, but it's operating system. expenses, and I know that that's been yes. discussed in prior meetings. Right. Yeah. Brenda, you don't know off the top of your head. You probably do the the amount that we agreed to for um a capital. Per capita, I, I want to say it was one hundred and twenty-seven thousand nine. Was were the yes. four four items? Yeah, were, that that included the school. Uh, that was a school amount too. Yeah, yep. we, we included. Yep. So yes. Include, and then we were, we had a discussion about whether or not the flooring could wait uh, one year. Right. We were th we were thinking about that. It, there was no decision made, Margaret. Because the, the recommendation from the capital did include the flooring because it was a multi-year uh, project. So if we if we say it's one twenty-seven nine, yeah, it's going one, up. It's one twenty-seven nine, correct? Okay, then that leaves us one hundred sixty-nine thousand two ninety in free cash without. But don't we use all the free cash? Huh? No, we're not using all of it. No. We have to leave a base. I know we have to, but I thought on there it's sufficient. It's all included. School reduction, same thing. I just have everything used as questions. Yeah. 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 I just had a question about um, was part of that 127 um, stuff that was com coming from being funded from retained earnings and, and real allotment in the, or did we not count those at all? No. Yeah, those, yeah, those are not yeah. Those were the only the free cash. The server. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, would you repeat what you just said? I didn't hear that. The before. server was 17,000. Yeah. Yes. So it's 26,400 for the flooring. 72,000 for the phase two air conditioning, 
17,000 for the server replacement, and 12,500 for the senior center van. You guys hear all that? Calm down. Yeah. All right. But so, I'm, I guess I'm sorry, but I'm confused. Okay. The revenue detail shows free cash of one million two thirteen. So this is free cash plus the library trust. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at so that thirty yeah. eight hundred or something. But, but yeah, that, and that's that's hundred percent of our free cash, right? That's a hundred percent of our free cash. Okay, go over the right hand column. Yep. And we're going to use free cash, but that's. What? Isn't that what that's portraying? So how, are, how are we going to fund column H? This is the balance. So 101.2 million minus 809,000 we're spending is 400,000 left. So the total um, omnibus budget plus warrant articles is 19038531, and the available revenues are 19335721. So we are little on the plus side. So we have 297,000 left. Of that, we want to spend 127,000 on capital, which leaves us 169,290 for free cash left in the bucket. We're, we're not recommending taking any other capital. No, I'm, I'm trying to understand the spreadsheet. Okay, so this income, the, the revenue piece, you're, you're good with, right? Yeah, right. Okay. So there, our omnibus budget is eighteen million two twenty nine. Okay, so we need one hundred ten thousand to fund that, right? Right. The warrant articles that are in there is eight hundred nine thousand. So that's Skems and Smith Volk and whatever else. Yeah. That we do on warrant articles that leaves us four hundred set. If we subtract that from the free cash. So, did you add back the police vehicle into the warrant articles? Since you took it out. Yeah, account. here, I can zero that back out and okay. move it back. If that makes you happy. Oh, okay. Is that clear? Yeah, that, that's what I Is that clear? Okay. Great. Okay. Really reducing the revenues. By that point. Really reducing the free cash base. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's it's not that this 169,290 is about in between what we left on the table the last two years. So not a lot different than the last two years, but so the the free cash, the free cash base that was withheld, we have not gone over the past three years. The free cash withheld as the base for the following or the subsequent fiscal year has not gone below fourteen percent over the past uh, on each of the past three years. If we retain two hundred thousand dollars of this year's free cash, the percent of free cash withheld would only be 12.84%, leaving 169,290 on the table is getting closer to leaving only 10%. And this year we did see in free cash, when free cash was generated, we did see some one-time revenues that, that were incorporated into our free cash generation this year. And, and we will again this year. And we will this year again, Margaret. To we always do. Of four to $500,000 like, like yeah, like we saw this year. There's three hundred and twenty-five thousand. I'm just um as as one one-time fee, uh, for a permit. Yeah. What we, is what is the what is the plan moving forward? We can't we can't sustain this this level of 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 free cash use. We're it's it's being eroded. My opinion for last few years is that we really need to take the year, do a full accounting of what it takes to run this town in 2024, 2025, moving on to 26, and really think about um, the staff it takes now that we've we've really added quite a bit of staff over the last few years to really get caught up as to where we need to run the town. We need to be taxing at a rate that we have money going into stabilization. We have money paying towards some of the long-term expenditures that we need. Um, we have money paying for the maintenance that it takes to run these buildings and to pay for the staff. 
I just think it's time to reset. Uh, you know, you just can't, I mean, if all, you know, I haven't been here long, but I've been here for enough years to see that each year, you know, we luck out that there's a permit or we luck out that we had more cars sold or more rooms done, or we've done some magic with, you know, receipts and, um, you know, we really, we just keep cutting everybody's budget and we luck out that the school can, you know, find some money through ESRA or something else, but all that's going to come to a head. And I think we really need to take a, a long-term year to look at what the taxes need to be to cover the business of the town going forward. Because we can't, you're right, we can't do this. We need to roll skims into the operating budget as we should, even though know, somebody's talking that, oh, we're going to get enough profit out of it to not cost the community. But I, I find that hard to believe at the moment. I'd love that opportunity. To see. I'd love to see that. But it's expensive, and it's more expensive each year to, to do everything in this town. And um, I feel like we've made a lot of headway through staff, grants, a lot of grassroots work to get these projects going to move our town forward over the years. But because we've been stagnant for many, many years um, on, on different projects, but it, it's unsustainable. So we either cut staff, cut service, and go back to kind of doing nothing or very little, or we have a come to terms with the community and saying, this is what it takes to run the town. We haven't had a, we haven't had a change in our taxes. Each year we look to cut that tax rate so that, you know, we're not so difficult for hitting taxpayers all the time as their evaluations go up, but we still need to run the town. And I think it, an honest assessment of what it takes to do that and um, and try to roll in everything that we know needs to happen and set that rate uh, going forward. But it's a lot of work and it take, I think we need to start for next year to do that. I just quick note, I uh, did have a conversation with the school administration that we could um, hold on the flooring for a year and that um, the AC units, it's really about 9,000 a room. Um, so they were, I think they were hoping to do eight rooms but he said, you know, if 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 we can do, you know, fifty thousand or something like six rooms, whatever, you know, he understands we're in a tough spot. So if we can do, he really thinks, and we think it's important to keep rolling on the AC units. But if we can do a few rooms this year, um, you know, if we need to cut that seventy-two to fifty something to cover six rooms or something like that, um, and hold off on the flooring a year, that would help us, I think, tremendously here. And we'll regroup in the fall if there happens to be a large couple permits or something like that. Well, and I, as far as the air conditioning goes, um, we had a, a capital appropriation of 45,000 for this year. Um, it did get spent, but we have since received all of that money back um, in the form of a rebate. Did we get it? We did. Shelly, Shelly, Shelly submitted it to us to to redeposit. Um, well, so so it's just it's just been applied back against the capital account. So what I'm saying is they have forty five thousand dollars now to spend towards the next air conditioning. Um, there there was um another rebate that we got that it was for a previous fiscal year and that had to go into miscellaneous revenues so in the fall they might come back to us and ask for more money out of that to um to go towards that project but I, i'm 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 happy as a being on the capital committee if we don't do the flooring this year, but I, I, it's a false savings to not do the air conditioning. The kids really need the air conditioning. With the shoulder seasons being so hot, they really do need the air conditioning. So I, I would not be in favor of cutting the air conditioning. I personally don't disagree with you, and I think it's, um, I think it's extremely important to maintain the assets we have. Um, doing the air conditioning is one of those projects, and doing the air air conditioning with one time revenues like free cash is, in my opinion, perfectly appropriate. More appropriate than funding recurring expenses. Um. I just want to say, as with Trevor, we had talked about pulling in SCEMS um, into our regular budget. And I, I feel if we can give uh, our new director a year 
to stabilize the operation because in my mind, it was unsustainable. We were headed in an unsustainable direction, but he's reversing course. And it's just, it's gonna take more than a few weeks of him being here. And so having us look long-term and say, yes, we can do a structural change and have us reset um, stuff in the next, not the next fiscal year, but the following fiscal, fiscal year, I think would be reasonable. And I, M Margaret, I, I have been saying for years, when our budget is really clearly, if you add in all expenses of the schools, when our budget is clearly 70% related to school, you know, school expenses, we have very little to operate our regular operations, government operations. And so the only thing you can do is increase revenue. And that's why I have been working so hard since last year, last February, um, trying to get us some more money through this, you know, school. Uh, the bills that Joe and Natalie sponsored should have corrected that. Um, they're not going anywhere this year, I don't, I don't believe. But we are hoping to get more money through rural aid and we're gonna have to keep pushing because, you know, when the schools have been really reasonable this year, but sometimes they're not. And, you know, when we're hit like an 8% increase sometimes, which they can't help, it's really hard to, to make cuts to our general government because it's we're bare bones. Yet we're seeing growth far in excess of two and a half percent in a lot of general, well, I don't want to say general government budget areas, because you could look at public works and see that there's growth exceeding two and a half percent. There's growth um, of $82,000 just in public works alone, and um, and it represents a, a, a one-tenth of the um, of the budget of the, uh, of the education uh, segment of the budget. So... It's a matter of sustainability, and, and clearly this is uns unsustainable, just as Trevor said, unsustainable. But of course, you know, it's not like we can just declare a prop of two and a half override. The town has to approve it, and how likely is it that they would? Please. Answer, not. <laughs> you have to make your case. Yes, yeah, it, it, take, it takes this committee and this, this board working together um, really hard for a year, uh, discussing, having public meetings, having discussion about it. There will be plenty of, there'll be 400 people that'll say no, but as long as we can get our case out there and show, you know, have hearings, talk about these budgets, look at seriously, if you just really break it down for people, what it is, what we're doing, what we need to do uh, going forward. I, th I think most sensible people come to the realization and go with the recommendations of combined boards because we're the ones working you know on behalf of the towns not always and and you know schools failed multiple the sewer failed you know, roads failed like it fails but you just have to keep coming back and be making the case sensibly reasonably about you know not hey we need a big piggy bank but everybody always says we need to put money aside so we can maintain things but each year, we never have enough money to put aside to maintain anything. So here, we're listening to you. We should be doing this. This is why we need this, you know, a little bit extra to be able to make sure that we have a couple hundred thousand a year to put in stabilization one way or the other. It would be nice to have um, <clears throat> to uh, establish some sort of policy mm -hmm. to manage um, the free cash and to allocate it yep. um, throughout the course of each uh, fiscal year so that it is it can become a little more sustainable. Absolutely. So, Brenda, can I ask a question about free cash? I mean, uh, as you said, we're we're going to be putting 325000 back into free cash uh, once it's certified in the fall. Um, so what is the correct level of free cash for a budget our size? And You know, um, can't even remember what we were what we were putting into financial policies, but I want to say five to six percent. But uh, I don't, I can't answer that right now, Tim, because I don't, I don't remember what the appropriate amount um, or percentage is that should go into the page. 
So what we were looking at when we were looking at those financial policies mm -hmm. was um, the certified free cash amount each year should be a certain percentage of our total. Right. Life. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that and, and I want to say that we were we were looking at five to six percent as being um, a benchmark because I I I want to say that DOR says five percent, but yeah. I, I can't. I just it's been so long since we looked at it. I just can't remember. Yep. They say five percent cash reserves. Is okay. what yeah is what they say. So that would be combined stabilization, free cash, all your cash reserves. From that perspective, with our general stabilization and the free cash and the well, right. we've eroded away. The Except that yeah. Except that it's it's being yeah. I mean, the underlying thing is if if inflation is over two point five percent annually, and you can only raise two point five percent, then. If you pay anybody anything, you're going to go over 2.5% because your employees are the biggest expense that other than, you know, so this is just a problem that's going to continue. It's not like we can solve it. And then it's not going to, it's going to go away. It's going to come back. So, you know, this is a problem. With... So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, well, the question could reasonably be asked, since the town's population has been static for something like 20 years, why is the town government increasing in size? You know, it's I mean, why, why, why do we have more staff when we have the same number of people? Because you have more services that, that have uh, that are required by the state, right? Unfunded <laughs> and things that cost more money than they did 15, 20 years. But and, I mean, with, and, it's costing more money doesn't affect the fact that we have more people. And we building. have 30 to $40 million in infrastructure projects that hadn't been tackled in 50 years. Right. So, That's huge. And, and, and grant that. maintenance, grant um, administration for all the grants that we need to accomplish these things, all of that takes time and all of it takes money. And I don't, I don't know... I, I I don't have in, in my pocket uh, a thing that says we've increased staff by how many how many numbers um, you know maybe you guys have done this before and you have that somewhere. No, uh, we all. I to. could by next week. <laughs> right. I, we talked about it last year, and I had a list, but I, right. I couldn't reliably do it right now. Yeah. So, like for yeah. for instance, in Skims, we increased staff I think twenty percent, and we didn't take into account the um, employment benefits costs, we just did it. And if, you know, that looks to me like a bit of a mistake, um, but um, hopefully with the plan that we're being presented, it's gonna reverse that trend. Uh, so, yes. I mean, if we're gonna look for cuts, where are we gonna look for cuts? I, I personally certainly would not go um, to staff first. I wouldn't go to any non-discretionary line items first. I would always look at discretionary line items. For, that's just me personally. Yeah. Um, and I, I, so I'm, I'm not speaking for the, the finance committee, but um, again, I personally might be able to be, I am, I am, I am a fiscal conservative, as if mm -hmm. as if you have one. I will look at all that. <laughs> um, but uh, I could be convinced um, to support recommending um, an operating budget where no less than two hundred thousand dollars of free cash generates to next fiscal year. I mean, I'm really concerned because I do know that we're going to be probably we're going to have to replenish stabilization after we fund the emergency repairs are we planning to how much stabilization are we planning to use for the emergency road repairs we've got to replenish that and that's going to be how much six hundred thousand so so on that spreadsheet the stabilization was going to get down six hundred thousand correct yeah yeah the eight hundred thousand. So, so we so that's so that, general stabilization right now is 1.4 million ish yeah and we're going to take we're going to use six of that and we're going to use six hundred thousand for that. So, I mean, that's obviously going to be one uh, one of our priorities: replenishing stabilization. So, there's six hundred thousand dollars of free cash 
um, in the fall or whenever it is that we replenish stabilization. Um, and I know that there's been, we're talking about deferring a few capital items to the fall or future town meeting, put that money aside. So, so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here. <laughs> yes, yes, there's gonna have to be really serious discussion about, um, about a way to sustain the operating budget. And is override a two thirds vote or is it higher? No, it's a simple majority simple when it gets, majority. and an override is um, strictly in the select board's hands. Setting an override, uh, determining that there's gonna be an override, the level of the override is a uh, select board um, legal that, jurisdiction. <laughs> so it's a it's straight majority both at town meeting and at the ballot. At the ballot. I don't know about I I'd, I'd have to I'd have to re recall that. It might have to be two thirds at town meeting, but it's definitely only a majority at, at uh, a ballot. I think in all elections, when it's an actual vote, it's majority. Um oh. you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I was asking town meeting, you have to convince a certain percentage of people if it's two thirds, at the town meeting. Yeah. there are some things that are two thirds. Like if we vote to use stabilization yeah, at, at town meeting, at town meeting. I'm it's talking about an election to validate something you did at town meeting. Like the road repair. Both, right. road repair was a straight majority vote. Once it got out of town meeting, right. at town meeting it was two thirds. So, so like when you come to the ballot box here, it's fifty percent point one, and you win okay. or you lose. Uh -huh. yeah. Like I just right. want to say, um, my understanding is hopefully by the fall town meeting, we would have, uh, you know, our second round of payout from the state by then. Not 100% sure, but hopefully. And that we, we would move that money back into stabilization, obviously, whatever we get. Uh, there's no guarantee uh, how much we're going to get. Just like we didn't know how much we're gonna get, you know, we got this last round. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we're not gonna see it. I don't think we're gonna, I don't believe we're gonna see it by June 30th, but um, so it would have to go to the fall town meeting. So I think I heard Trevor say that the plan is over the next year to work towards a prop two and a half override with the intent that that would come to town meeting next year yeah. for the following year. I thought I heard you say two years, Carol. Well, I think I think next year is too soon because it, you need to have, in my mind, I would support an override for structural change. Structural change means bringing the SCEMS budget into our regular budget. And that means that it has to be 100% stable. And I think Josh is very capable director, but I'm not sure if I'd be ready for next town meeting. That's all. Structural change is also addressing the negative place of the of our parks for the last 20 years. I mean, when are we going to stop that and finally say, this is what it takes to run a town in 2027? 2026. I mean, it'll be 2027 budget, so or 2026 budget. So, I just don't know if we'll be ready by uh, next next spring. That's all. It's a year away. It's a year to have discussions. All right. To work together. So let's um. <laughs> it'll be within let's the year. Let's go back within to two where years. we were yeah. um, a <laughs> moment ago, which is looking at this year's budget. Um, so that was just a preface to the next question, which is whether anybody has any specific um, budget line items that you would like to go back and discuss or look at again. And what I would propose is that if the person responsible for that budget is it here tonight, that we discuss what we want, but then we reach out to that person. So if it's a, a department head who isn't here, we would reach out to them. So, um, okay. I got an easy Jim? one then. I think we got to re-examine the finance committee budget. Right. What's your account number? Two? What uh, number is that? Uh, one three one fifty four hundred. I will make a motion that uh, the finance committee budget um, be reduced to two hundred dollars. That would cover yes, the ATFC. But that would cover the ATFC dues, and that's it. I will second that for discussion. I, I would like a little more information on what the other expenses are comprised of. So I 
one expense that I know of is there's a semi-annual ATFC meeting um, that I have been attending for the past couple of years and they're roughly 25 bucks a pop 25 35 somewhere around there um so we have been spending some more for that that covers the admission to those and then meetings. you just you just uh signed up for another seminar for 25 bucks right yeah that's that that's that, that atfc one, one. Well, yeah the reason i suggested is a i think it's an important gesture to make and b mm -hmm. the very fact that it is so small means that we should do this out of pocket if we have to. It's a deductible expense if you do it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Right. Did I, did so I, I get 25% yeah. of that off or whatever, 15% of that. But, you know, um, but, you know, I think it's important that the town see that we're doing our damnedest. I, I think it's, I, I'm with Jim. I think it's extremely important that we, um, we serve, um, we lead by example, and uh, that we do our due diligence, even on finance committee's own budget. However, I think I'd like to amend, may I, may, may I move to amend Jim's motion to cut it in half to $250. That would allow you to go to those two what meetings. <laughs> so I would bet I, I could pay, I'd pay my own way. Email I could second the motion to amend. Okay. Um, any discussion on the amendment, changing it to 250? All those in favor of uh, the amendment, changing the motion to 250. And so that passes four zero zero. So we have a motion to change the finance committee budget from five hundred dollars to two hundred fifty dollars. Uh, any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. So, um, any other line items that we would like to revisit? Um, Julie, you had mentioned police cruiser. Uh, um, can we discuss that? Sure. So that is two ten fifty eight hundred. That are we going to would be voting on that today, or we want to try to discuss that one? So we're going to discuss whether we want to. Well. What's your question? <laughs> 210. 210-5800. So there has been discussion at prior meetings as to whether or not the police department cruiser should be on the operating budget or whether it should, it should be considered a capital item or come to town meeting as a standalone warrant article, what have you. Um, one way or another, if we if we do stick with a cruiser replacement, and I know, unfortunately, Dave's not here. He had asked about kind of a defer deferred purchase of mm -hmm. the cruiser, maybe going 14 months or longer uh, before purchasing the replacement. Could save a few dollars, but um, I think we, we'd need the police chief's input here um, as to whether or not deferring a police cruiser replacement for a full year um, is, is even feasible. So um, I'm, I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, putting a police cruiser, $65,000 single item on the operating budget takes a, a very large chunk um, of equipment and, and puts it in operating. Um, uh, I get that the replacement is every year, but at the same time, it is a depreciating asset. Mm -hmm. So, my question is, do we leave it on the operating budget, recommend leaving it on the operating budget or pulling it out? Can I just say that it doesn't qualify for capital because it's reoccurring. It is over 10,000, but it's reoccurring every year. We've had, John knows we've had this discussion many, I don't know, a decade at least. 
and we finally agreed that it should be in the operating budget because it is basically he uses the police department because of their patrols use up a cruiser every year. So making it instead of 12 months, 14 months or 16 months, um, I don't think the chief has a problem with that, but it, it's the idea that I, I don't believe it belongs in capital. based on our definition of, you know, capital items. John, do you have anything to add to that? No, it's just we're following the bylaws that have been approved by the taxpayers, in my opinion. But my opinion, it doesn't matter in the long run anyway. Of course you. Uh, <laughs> don't say that. Then... No, but how it's used is still going to spend sixty-five thousand yeah. dollars. I don't mean it doesn't have to spend. It. How about significant we, cost escalation it, in that line item? Yeah, and like it, it is capital from the point of view that it's on the. Uh, what do you call that thing that the auditors keep track of? Fixed, with the list asset. of it's a fixed asset. So from that perspective, but um, it's a pity there's not a separate category for essentially uh, uh, consumable assets, or that because I feel like you know the police car is a good example where yes, it's a it's a capital expense, but we do it every year, and there's things like sideware, sidewalk repairs, and even street repairs. You know, that we're doing something every year, so. Treating it as a capital expense seems a little, you know, disingenuous almost. It's like our sidewalks will last forever. Oh dear, no, something has happened to this section. You know? <laughs> um I so we can move on. I want to look at the, I want to read the bylaws and see what the definition of capital is that's in the bylaws before we discuss this. Two ten. Um, so let's maybe hold this as a, I've, I've written it down on my list of stuff. I still need no to No motion has been made. So no motion has been made. So let's hold that thought and revisit it next week. Um, in the interim, we can go read and think about it. You okay with that? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. Okay. Fair All right. Let's do that. Did you have other, anybody else have a line in? John, you mentioned something. Yeah, I, I missed the meeting. So not all my budget detail sheets are up to date or up to snuff, but I saw some, the ones I have didn't agree with the omnibus budget recap. I don't know if that can that kind of ever happen where we voted something here, but it's different on the recap. Um, or is the spreadsheet set up so it can't happen? Well, I I'm I'm subject to error just like everybody else. So uh, but I do go through those pretty thoroughly. Um what mm -hmm. what you're looking at. Maybe we could get together later instead of taking other people's time. We can. If mm -hmm. you want, that's up okay. to you. Huh? Yeah. It was like only like three or four. Anybody yeah, and else? I guess I got one other thing yeah. on the 145 5410. That's where we use treasure collector expense. Right. Oh. Treasure collector expense. There's 10,000 what we're really going to spend. Right? Which that, account is this? I'm sorry. Treasure collector, treasure collector uh, This is the one where she can put the ten thousand dollars. It's a separate. Right. The treasure the collector 10, expense. Have... She can designate ten thousand dollars to use to recap. Oh, that to, yeah. together. But yeah. that's, that's ten thousand we're going to spend though. That's not in the recap, right? Um. It. It is in the recap, but um. It's not on this budget sheet. Because it's a separate item 
It's not something you can vote on. Well, I just want to make sure the 10,000 is in the right place. That's all. And there is the expense detail. Where is it? So if, but, but, I'm going to say this and you can tell me where I've gone wrong. If we add the $10,000 here that she can do that with, right. then we voted at town meeting. We voted to give her $10,000 more. And then she could still, like the way the law is written, she could, that that's that's not the $10,000 that she can take from. Uh, right. Right. We don't, we, don't, we don't have an opportunity to vote whether she can do the additional $10,000. That's really a judgment call based on, on me and the assessors working together to finish the recap. And if she says... This is what I need to finish with the tax takings that we're going to do in this fiscal year that gets added to the tax recap. That's her prerogative as the treasurer. I understand that. It but... just it's not something you can vote on. And these sheets are all what you vote on. Okay. So if we add the ten thousand dollars here, we would be giving her ten thousand dollars more to spend. And then on top of that, she, she can, can do still another do the tax taking thing. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think and the and the um program. And what all we're doing is adding the Gads B45 half this year. Right. Instead of yeah. making it all yeah. in and then one so year. next year we'll see it. That makes me happy because then it'll be smooth every year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 So. I think I think that's a better choice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so that's part of her increase is is yeah. is having that's that instead of waiting another year and then having a big jump again. But we're going to be spending ten thousand. We're not looking at. That's we're probably the... not spending that in fiscal twenty four. Um, I think Sarah mentioned that that she has decided that um, it's better to finish out the fiscal year and do the tax takings right at the end of the fiscal year, so that in the fall, our our slate is is wiped clean for purposes of her selling those properties off. That's that's the or the town selling the properties off. Um, that was her goal. And that was what she felt she needed the money for. Was for the oh, so she's going to carry it forward. Nope. She'll, she'll re-ask for that again on the tax recap this year. On the, on, yeah, on the tax recap. Okay. It just won't get spent this year. It'll go into free cash. Right. Thank you. I'm good. Go ahead, Margaret. Uh, General Highway Payroll. When uh, Kevin was here, we discussed the adding a full-time temporary mechanic at the cost of twenty-six thousand um, dollars. He was figuring a half time uh, for half a year. Yeah, right. for half a year. Yeah. So there was supposed to be more. I think we were uh, going to hear more inf information, not specific information on a person, um, but as to a uh, discussion as to whether or not. We actually need to spend an additional twenty six thousand uh, dollars. I don't know that we'd have that answer before we, town meeting, um, but I I do know that Kevin's intent in keeping it in there was that he felt that when he retired, you would be spending more money than what he's getting paid right now to replace him because that just tends to happen. Well, so right, I well, I, I feel like. Yeah, regardless of the mechanic, similar, similar, similarly, like we're doing in your office, <laughs> um, you know, we need a succession plan for Kevin. And I know that we have not, I don't know if this is that money is part of that, but I know that we're going to need some overlap and we're going to need some help uh, for transition. Um, and I think that's why he wanted to leave that in there. Whether he gets the without him here to talk about it, right? I mean, I I can only we'll have to say what touch him base. and I have discussed. Um, we are, we are uh, Kevin has indicated now that maybe instead of September, it would be in July that he would be retiring. So we are we were moving on or re looking at the whole department, reorganizing that department. Um, so now it's uh, moved ahead as a priority for us. 
So we will be discussing that. But I, as Brenda said, um, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a savings per se, but maybe. So we leave the $26,000 buffer in there and it's a wait and see. Well, we don't have an answer on the on the situation with our employee yet. Or you could take it out and use the reserve yeah. fund, but we just lowered the reserve fund to 100000 I'd hate to put us yeah. in jeopardy right at the beginning. I guess that's another thought in mind. But do you, do you, does the committee want to have him in again to talk about it, or does that? I actually think we need to pinpoint how much we need to reduce the budget by, so we can so we can really move forward with this discussion. I mean, it's the finance committee's responsibility um, to, um, to to do our due diligence uh, with the town's finances and make sure that we have scrubbed everything without sacrificing too much, obviously, but we are in a real pinch this year. And if we could identify the hole that needs to be closed, then it would be easier to discuss what we could take, uh, you know, what we would recommend to take from various lines. So there's discomfort if we, I've shared this up again. So where we are right now with what's been proposed is leaving 169,000 in free cash. So maybe the, the first discussion is how much do we feel should be left in free cash to carry forward into next year? I've said my piece, I, a minimum of $200,000, which was Brenda's recommendation. We can't guarantee that we're going to see a spike in free cash next year like we did this year. And again, from one-time revenue sources. Yeah. There's a... Well, conservatively, it's going to go up to 484000 with this one-time permit as soon as it gets certified as being, you know, cert certified, right? And What's the permit? It's a, a permit fee. Building permit. Yeah. Oh, so another one-time revenue source. Yeah. 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 Margaret, we hate, but, but Margaret, uh, you know, the, we have nonprofits in our town, but the plus side for that is that they continually upgrade their facilities. So we, so that's why we have these one-time um, free cash influxes all the time on a regular basis. We haven't seen the one-time free cash influx like we saw this year over the past four years prior to. This year was a $400,000 spike. Now, I don't know if the town intends, it was four to $500,000 uh, over last year's certi free, certified free cash. So even if we keep seeing permit fees coming in, they're continuing to do work, we, I think we're depending on something that may or may not be there and may or may not be to the extent that we hope it will be. So you're uh, looking to find 31,000 that would make you uh, feel comfortable. Uh, absolutely. I think that we need to have a safe free yeah, cash base going that. into next. Yeah, I, I think we could find 30, 31,000 somewhere. Brenda, do you know how, mu how much we left in free cash like Let's say the past three years, last year, year before, year before that. Yeah. Uh, that. Do we have that? Oh, I have that. that piece of paper in I front have, of me. I've okay. got it. So in fiscal 22, we left 295412 In fiscal 23, we left 180200 And in fiscal 24, we left 153921 And in each of those three years, especially in the past two years, Free cash only hovered between um, one million and one point two million. Not even that. Except, except FY twenty five's free cash was based on FY twenty four. We'd only left one hundred fifty three thousand in there. And, and that was a but that was an intentional thing on the part because our free cash was up at one five all the time, right? When I first came, and we all said, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! Way too much money." Let's 
Well, we, we were leaving that. way too much on the table each year, so it was always way too high because mm -hmm. it left well, the auditors didn't and like it. Frenzy in yeah. The hall. yeah, the auditors didn't like it either. Right. Well, so. you know, I mean, they want you to have healthy free cash. Yeah. So healthy free cash for us is between, you know, a million two and a million five, right? Right. Yeah. There was one year we had a million. Yeah, that was the year we all went. Oh, right. Yeah. We so if we take that classroom flooring is 26,400. So if we take that out, that gets us close to 200. But if we take that out, I, I, I'm just thinking out loud. If we take that out, we're going to do it next year. And so... Um, it just kicks the can down the road, but we're doing that with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Right, but I, I I don't know. I I could be talked into just going ahead and doing it. Go ahead, Jim. Um, there's also the the school air conditioning. You said that we had forty five thousand in rebates. Yeah, right, if that's correct. Then that's would mean that you could reduce the amount spent budgeted for. Um, uh, unless they had already taken that into consideration when they asked for the 72,000 I don't know speaking with them said look it's about 9,000 a room if we can if we can do a few less rooms great you know but not a major deal at least so three rooms yeah fewer three would put us that, right that on the edge there we have the 45 left over I think we could get some stuff done and we could revisit in the fall if we you know I mean mm -hmm. I think we would rather find, I'd rather find it somewhere else in the air conditioning. I think it's a healthy, I think it's a public health. Thing. I'd be, I'd be willing to, I don't know if this requires a motion, but I'd be willing to make a motion to uh, defer the flooring um, to a future fiscal year, just for the purpose of updating these numbers to see what we sure. do. Okay. And I just want to clarify, um, talking about we have 169290 in free cash, and I heard somebody say we have 1.4 in free cash, million. I, I don't understand. I'm probably missing something, obviously. I, I see stabilization has got 1.4 million, but when was the last time we had 1.4 million in free cash? That's certification. So, yeah, that's what we in, in the fall. fall. Yeah, that's right. So all yes. the things that we don't spend because yeah. somebody retired early, or uh, you know, we didn't buy something after all, it's going to go from one hundred sixty nine thousand to one point four million in in the fall. Well, you so so your free cash is is a combination of several different things. It's what you leave on the table. Yep. It's whatever revenues you collect over and above what you budgeted whatever expenditures you did not make that weren't carried over into the next fiscal year. Um, plus there's a there's a little uh, having to do with what you have in, in receivables and, and the deferred revenues that plays into it. That's a small part of it, but that's the combination of what makes up your free cash. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, so I'm just trying to... so so last year we might have had five to six hundred thousand more in revenues, um, but then we had um, um, three to four hundred thousand, maybe even five hundred thousand that we didn't spend that that we had budgeted for. That's right. Plus, you had what you had left over at the end of it last fiscal year. So it's it's a combination of a lot of different right. things. So we're talking about just we're talking about just leaving this is. Um, to get to that one point, whatever it is. No. That's why, yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah. you know, Margaret had a good point. We, we, you're you're going to have to really focus on rebuilding the stabilization account. Right. So yeah. to leave 200000 on the table is kind of a minimum to leave for this fiscal year so that you can have enough free cash in the fall that you can maybe start to Don't start to put that. some of that back. Yeah. 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 Um, Brenda, while we're on the subject, um, is there any pattern to where the free cash comes from? Is it typically unspent money or is it typically uh, better revenues than expected? Or is there no pattern? Um, 
usually there's more money, more free cash that comes from revenues over and above what we budgeted. But with that said, I've gotten more aggressive with the local receipt right. um, estimates. So you're going to have less free cash from revenue. Okay. You're still conservative. Though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I would not support. Right. I, I wouldn't support. So there's also a chance. Oh, no, never mind. Skems is looking at their budget again, and that's going to flex a little bit, but we don't know which way it's going to flex, but it's right. a smallish amount, right? I, a few I thousand. Think, I think they're pretty intent on lowering our assessment, maybe yeah. a little bit, you know, 15, 20,000. Yeah. Oh, if it's 15 or 20,000, then we're well, we're, we're over our. Or 200. So if we right. take out the floor, we're at 195, 690. Yeah. If you do something here to make that wash. Yeah. You need a motion for that? Well, who knows? We haven't moved the. Uh... So we'll vote. We haven't voted capital. No. Because um, we'll vote that when we go through the warrant articles. Uh, so, but we, I don't know what we would do. <laughs> uh, are we, so just to have the discussion, are, are we comfortable with 195, 195,000 in cash? I'm comfortable with 200. Through? With 200, okay. I'm comfortable with 200, so which was Brenda's we, original recommendation. I'm, I'm comfortable with that. So we can probably look in the seat that questions. with I guess there's $250 more in here too because we didn't take it out of our finance committee. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> but oh, that's uh, going to help us a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, so if we if we go to 200, then so we have a gap. Why don't we make a motion that the finance committee recommends that we leave 200,000 in free cash when the budget is all said and done? And we leave up it minimum. there yep. for up this minimum. week. And then over the next week, you guys can, like, SCEMS will even out, and the school might, you can talk to the school about the floor or yep. one ACE or something, whatever they, you know, whatever their priority is yep. to, um, you know, what they would prefer and, and kind of leave it at that. All right. I move that we establish a minimum free cash of 200000 as a base for FY, yes, the coming fiscal year. I was second that. <laughs> Any discussion? Yeah. Go ahead. We're just taking it upon ourselves to say the flooring is not going to be in the capital. No. What but we're by... saying is that we want a minimum of two hundred thousand dollars in left in free cash all right well, so when so not, not accountants are gonna go figure out how that's gonna happen all right so that spreadsheet we're looking at is not as things stand now. well it's a yeah this yeah is but a this, that was a suggestion yeah. john that was a suggestion that i think we could all live with was to put okay, the I off to next year but um and i think we could probably find you know, five thousand somewhere be between scams. If we, it, I mean, even if scams was just lowered a little bit, um, our our share at fifty percent would probably be at least five thousand. So, so were there um. Oh, we haven't voted this yet, right? Okay. So is that is that the answer to your question? Yeah. Yeah. Any other discussion on this motion? All those in favor. All right. That passes four zero zero. Were there any other so um planning board is tonight, they start at six thirty, so we have to be out of here by like six twenty. Oh. Um so darn the luck, we only have ten <laughs> more minutes to chat um, this evening. So, are there any? But are there any other line items that um, are still bugging you from before? Go ahead. Uh, we'll do later about the other thing. But yeah. on revenue, 
Um, again, I missed the meeting, so the well, revenue. Let's, let's hang on to. I, I'm sorry. Let's hang on to the revenue thought for for a minute. Are there any other budget line items that Margaret you, you had a? Couple I had of a I had a list of them, but I much prefer to put it in the hands of the town's administration to find okay. appropriate areas okay. to reduce. Um, they know right. they know their operations the best. So excellent. Okay, revenues. <laughs> the revenue detail, this Brenda, right? Mm -hmm. Shows fourteen million four twenty one zero eighty from property taxes. Correct. And you're right. The tax right. levy calculation shows right. a different amount. Because I haven't given you an updated tax levy. Okay. It's just so it's it, not an error. It's no, just, it's just the, the excluded debt. Okay. Yeah. It was once we got the numbers from Frontier Regional that okay. added. I just want to make sure it wasn't a booth. No, it, it's it's correct. Okay, thanks. Okay. Is there anything you, you want from us for next week, um, question-wise? I mean, I, I know what you're saying, Margaret. Um, I think we can come up with some suggestions, but I meant in general, anything else? I would just ask that, uh, we talked about discretionary and non-discretionary line items. I would just ask that to the greatest ex extent possible, non-discretionary items and discretionary items that could result in a higher cost be avoided, that we avoid those. Um, in other words, try to look for the low hanging fruit. Um, but we- you We know, always do, Margaret. 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 <laughs> and we gave you a head start with the finance committee's budget. <laughs> so there was something about like um, gas. There was a gas budget. Gasoline and the down. police department yeah, budget. So there's, yeah, there's and John things, said you guys can look take a that. look at that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. This is not really committee business, but it's important that you all know. So uh, next Tuesday, it doesn't matter what time you start, because I'm not going to be in the state. Uh, oh, I will God. not be here. I'm going to be watching an eclipse in Texas. Oh, no. oh, oh Jim! Awesome. Well, all right. Go all the way to Texas, though, right? Well, How could you not go? I think the weather's likely to be better there than in right Vermont. That. That's <laughs> or upstate New York. My I've lived in those places. I mean, you could go to Buffalo or Burlington, Vermont. In 20 years, right? For the next. I mean, it's it, where we are, right. obviously. I'll be but watching anyway, a so partial eclipse from just the Bahamas. Just, let you, just let you <laughs> someone again. Someone so you're not going to be here in March. No. I'm going to be here next Tuesday. You're going to be here. Tuesday. Is that a deductible expense for a sci-fi writer? You ought to be there. Yeah, I should be. Okay, I'll have to check with the others. Um, so I I don't think we have time to start in on any of the. Oh, warrant articles. Uh, yeah, it's, so I think we're probably done for the evening. And next week we will. So you're not meeting next Monday. We're not meeting Monday. We're meeting, meeting Tuesday, Tuesday at four thirty. Yeah. Um, and doing warrant articles. And then also, I guess we're still working on the budget, so we'll see what what we need to do to get to the the two hundred thousand. Um, um, the capital. I guess we could. Uh, the capital committee could make that suggestion. Again, I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll have to call Mark, and see if we can get that amended. Carolyn. Okay. Yes. I've already talked to Mark. The hearing is set. For the 17th, he's prepared to come to it. I can certainly convey this to him. Um, yeah. If Capital needs to meet, I'm sure he'll call a meeting. Okay, can you, can, yes, just ask him what he wants to do so that we can adjust that. Have the ability to adjust that before the hearing. Well, that could be discussed during the hearing too. I guess we could, yeah. If, if we all agree on it, then uh, I'm sure Capital would be amenable. And then you don't know when the information session is yet, right? You're still discussing when that's going to be. Well, can you all make it on the 18th or the or the 22nd? Which which we had um, a meeting set up. We were trying to set up a SCEMS meeting, and it seemed like most people could make the 18th. So we were thinking of the 22nd, but 
because we were trying to get this done, the SCEMS budget done before a week before Sunderland's town meeting. That was why we're doing the 18th. We felt the 22nd was kind of late. Yeah, and I, I don't feel there's, I don't favor the 22nd. And I just don't think we should be doing a week on Passover because who knows it's going to be a thing, you know? So we yeah. can do it on Christmas. So right. I, I know. I think we need That's to think it. about yeah, that. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. I'd be okay. For the 18th, if that's well, what was wrong with the 18th? Well, we were, it seemed like the, you know, we were trying to work on the SCEMS budget, and it seemed like yeah. the, the Board of Oversight soon. trying to get a quorum for the bo Board of Oversight. The 18th was the only available day. Uh, but if, okay. if we need to do it, the information night on the 18th, that's fine. We'll be here. What time would you expect that to be? We normally have it at six, Margaret. Okay. So we'll just, we'll have to tell us then that we'll have to not be there. Carolyn, I'm sure Tim could fill you in after the meeting. You'll know most of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, I'm. I'm fine with that. I mean, I would. Tim, I would be okay. It was the twenty second. Yeah, yeah. It was trying to get everybody out. Cool. That official. Uh, so I guess we should talk about. Um, we don't need to say. Because our we have a, a a finance committee meeting for the twenty second, which is Passover. So we should maybe not do that. Um. All right. We're still out of time. Um, so next week, finance committee is meeting on Tuesday at 4 30. Yes. And we're going to talk about the warrant and then we're going to talk about whatever we need to do to get to the two hundred thousand left in free cash. Okay. And then you have another meeting scheduled on the sixteenth at five PM, right? And then we have the following week, the sixteenth at five PM. So hopefully we'll be able to finish up the warrant that day. Yeah. Uh, for this, the um, information the personnel I... bylaw thing. Do we need somebody from the personnel? Well, I guess Dave's on the personnel committee. So, mm -hmm. and then I Casey. Yeah, you're all. I can over. certainly explain. I gave you a memo um, with some inf background information. Um, the personnel board has a meeting on the 9th at six o'clock, uh, where they're going to go over the bylaw change and the class comp. So David will be able to bring some information back. Personnel can't meet without David because, um, they don't have quorum without him. And the board actually needs to meet 15 minutes before the joint meeting on the 9th because they need to vote, the select board needs to vote um, an award for a particular infrastructure project. So I'll be starting their meeting a little bit before you, you would normally come in, folks. Okay. All right, so we will just push to get through all the warrant articles between next week and the week after on those two Tuesdays. If we don't finish it up on the second Tuesday, then we will talk about when we will meet again. So the 22nd is out? 22nd is still scheduled, but it's, um, I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? I, you want to cancel the 22nd? I was invited to a Passover dinner. So. <laughs> Let's cancel the 22nd. That's fine. Um, we shouldn't meet. Um, all right. Cancel the 22nd. And then we will, if we need another meeting, we will figure out when to have it. Um, we, we probably should have one more meeting because I'll do the write-up of the thing. And I would prefer to give everybody the write-up and then have a chance to discuss it before we publish it. Um, to get feedback on it. So we'll do that. Okay. On, uh, on that week, the someday. I, <laughs> okay. I don't know when. I mean, we can just do that virtually or something. I don't know. 
Have they did anything else we need to talk about? I move we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Beautiful. We are adjourned at 6.18 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Carolyn, Thank you. are you going to adjourn? Oh, select board adjourning. Oh. Um, well, Casey, we want to talk to you about um, our expense, line item expense. Uh, planning board has a meeting in 10 minutes. I need to close this meeting out so that we can um, yeah, allow them to log on and start the recording. No, no, we'll just adjourn and we can different talk about it yeah. on Wednesday. Okay. Which is better. How's that? Easier for you. Talk about it Wednesday. Yep. Margaret. Oh, well, uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. All those in favor? Tim LGI. Carolyn Nessai. I, I doubt they're wrong. <laughs>